서울대학교 보람의 병원 이호입니다. Greetings, I'm Professor Lee Ho of Seoul University Boramae Hospital. Today I'm going to talk about the sinus crystal approach using casket. As for sinus crystal approach in the early days, the original summer's technique was used the BAOSFE or bone added osteotum sinus floor elevation was used. Series of osteotomes were used for melting. Osteotome will be used to fracture the cortical bone in the sinus floor and the sinus membrane will then be elevated. Bone graft will be performed thereafter. In order to do this, the flat tip osteotome was used for melting. The floor was elevated in this way. The problem with this was that the melting force needed to be precisely applied, so the overall level of difficulty was quite high. If the available bone height is 6mm and 9mm, narrow osteotome or drilling will be used. Compared with the existing ridge height, Drilling would be done minus 1 millimeter. The depths would be maintained and the hole size would be expanded. Right before sinus floor penetration, bone graft material will be applied. Flat tip osteotome will be used for appropriate melting. The cortical bone of sinus floor would be infractured and at the same time membrane will be lifted. This was how crystal approach used to be done. The precaution that should be taken here is that the osteotome insertion height should not exceed that of original bone height. Also, sinus lift should be performed gradually so that not too many graft material are inserted at once. It should be done gradually by about 1 to 1.5 millimeters. Osteotome should not be in contact with the sinus membrane and in between that there will be graft material. Indirect pressure will be applied in all directions. Thereafter, implant will be placed. As shown here, Sinus floor penetration, membrane elevation, and grafting occurred all at once. The each different steps are difficult enough, but you have to do it all at once, so overall level of technique was quite high. In cast technique that is going to be discussed today, these different steps are done separately. In cast technique, penetration, elevation, and bone grafting are all done separately, and I'm going to address each of them in more detail. Guide drill where the 2mm stopper is used to mark the place where implant is going to be placed. A 2.2mm twist drill is used. Compared with the existing available bone height, we are going to drill up to minus 1mm. Cast drill is going to be used for sinus floor penetration, which is the most important stage. This is done gradually. Sufficient penetration up to this point should be done. There is little possibility of membrane perforation even if cast drill comes in direct contact. However, if excessive RPM or force is applied, because this is a tool that rotates, sinus membrane perforation may occur, so RPM should be around 400 to 800. Attention should be paid so that not too much force is applied on the apex area. Another point to remember, there can be partial penetration, especially in sloped sinus, partial penetration may occur. In this case, when implant is placed, it cannot be fixated properly. Sufficient diameter penetration should be done in a circular shape. After penetration, depth gauge is used to check whether penetration has been done properly. After penetration, hydraulic lift is performed for sinus membrane elevation. 
Through hydro lift and the sufficient space made, grafting is done, implant is placed, and cast technique is completed. As mentioned earlier, there is a two major difference between cast technique and existing osteotome technique. First is that the cast technique uses a specially devised drill. In the case of existing osteotome technique, osteotome was used to fracture sinus floor, so the fracture itself was a bit irregular. There were some sharp edges increasing the possibility of sinus membrane perforation. On the other hand, in the case of a drill used for cast technique, you can grind the sinus floor fairly evenly and albeit not 100%, compared with existing osteotome technique, sinus membrane perforation can be largely prevented. In the step prior to sinus penetration, despite drilling instead of 1 mm, if there are 2 or 3 mm of residual bone, no matter how much significant melting force you apply, the sinus floor will not fracture, therefore the patient can experience fear against that or even post-operative vertigo. The patient can experience BPPV thereafter. In the case of CAS kit, if sinus floor is penetrated using that drill compared with melting using osteotome, the patient can experience less discomfort and there is no BPPV. The second difference is hydraulic lift. The biggest benefit of CAS technique is hydraulic lift. The reason being, through hydraulic lift, we can check whether sinus membrane has been perforated or not. In the case of existing osteotome technique, you would do sinus floor elevation and bone graft at the same time. Realistically speaking, there was no way to check whether sinus membrane was perforated or not. However, with hydraulic lift, we can check that. Once hydraulic lifter is tightly applied, a sealed space can be created. In this situation, when saline is applied, because of the pressure that comes from it, the sinus membrane is elevated. You do not put in all saline at the same time. You repeat the process of push and pull action and gradually elevate the membrane. In this process, there is aspiration process. If there is no sinus membrane perforation, upon aspiration you would feel negative pressure. And if a membrane is being elevated appropriately because there is the ample supply of blood in the sinus of floor, as the sinus membrane is lifted, bleeding will occur. Upon aspiration, you would witness not just saline but the blood as well. The fact that there is blood along with saline upon aspiration and that you can feel continuous negative pressure, it will mean that there is no membrane perforation. This is a patient case. The patient was a 58-year-old female patient with hyperthyroidism. In number 16, implant was placed, as shown here. Available bone height is very limited. It's about 1 to 2 millimeters. This is the surgical clip because the alveolar bone height was extremely limited. Twist drill was not used and I started off using cast drill. I use it. 2 millimeter stopper which is the shortest from the beginning. This was a case where there was high possibility of sinus membrane perforation once a strong force is applied, so 
Small force of about 400 to 800 RPM was applied gradually for penetration. Penetration is not done at once because there's inclination. Partial penetration is done. You do not use drill excessively and using depth gauge, you start to detach the sinus membrane from the sinus floor starting off from the margin. By doing this, rather than just using drill, you can reduce the pressure that is applied to sinus membrane. Therefore, the possibility of membrane perforation caused by drilling can be reduced slightly. In this way, penetration is done. And then hydraulic lift is performed. When you do hydro lift, as mentioned earlier, you do not push in one strong force, but you do push and pull action gradually. This area needs to be in tight contact. By ensuring this, closed space is formed and when you apply sound line, the pressure coming from the water is effectively used for sinus membrane lift. When you continuously do push and pull action using saline, you can consistently feel the pressure and as membrane is being lifted, you can see blood also coming out upon aspiration. We can tell that sinus membrane is not penetrated by continuously sensing negative pressure and blood coming out upon aspiration. About 2 cc of water is used to elevate sinus membrane. The surgery is almost over. We started off with clear cell line, but by the end of surgery, you can see that blood is mixed into the cell line. And I can continuously feel the negative pressure. I can feel the pressure even when I push. After achieving the desired level of elevation, you check once again. And graft is performed. Actually, there is a bone condenser that fits the bone carrier perfectly, but at the time, bone condenser was not readily available, so I just used what was at hand. In the CAS kit, there is a bone condenser along with bone carrier in order to do bone graft easily. Implant is placed and surgery is completed. This is the internal bone level implant. Ideally, implants should be placed 1 to 2 millimeters subcrestal. However, the patient only had about 1 to 2 millimeter of residual ridge height. So this was not possible. Thus, as a compromise, implant was placed equicrestally. If you do not make a compromise in such cases, implant can fall into the sinus cavity, leading to a medical accident. So I made a compromise and placed the implant equicrestally. This is panoramic image after implant placement. This is before placement, right after, and a one year post-op image. As shown around the implant, a sufficient bone formation has been achieved. This is clinical image. Now let me summarize what has been mentioned thus far. There are two advantages in using CAS kit 
for sinus crestal approach compared with existing osteotome technique. First is by using a specially devised drill, you can reduce the possibility of sinus membrane perforation. Second, you can elevate membrane using hydraulic lift. The biggest benefit of doing hydraulic lift is that you can check whether the sinus membrane has been perforated or not. You can confirm this by checking whether the blood comes out upon aspiration. Also, if you feel continuous negative pressure, you can rest assured the sinus membrane is intact. This is what I've prepared thus far. If you come to offline lecture, you'll be able to get more specific details and get good tips along with meaningful hands-on experience. If you're interested, I look forward to your participation. Thank you for watching.